never too long. I've ever imagined that I've been on a journey. And uh, it has taken some time. You are expected to be there on time, but it has taken some time while, while on the road. And some things have come to be on your mind. And you are asking, can I make it? Am I going to be there on time? Can I be able to be able to be in that venue at the right time? Speak to the right people and maybe deliver what I wanted to do. Sometimes I've asked myself, when I have taken time and I am there at that place, am I going to give them the best? Sometimes it, it, I, I, I just sit down and ask myself, when I've been called for a certain assignment, and I've been told, Edna, you're supposed to be here by this time. And our program is supposed to take such and such minutes. Am I able to beat that time? Am I able to sit there and be able to give those people whatever they need? Sometimes in this world, we have walked and people have seen us. Sometimes we have even misrepresented the one who has called us. But today, I want us to picture something about Jesus Christ. That the journey we are in, the journey that we have taken, and the one who has called us is just right here with us. But one thing that is supposed to ring in our mind, we have been told all over the years that Jesus is coming. And we know for sure he is coming. But for us who have been waiting, it seems that God is taking too long. But I'm here to remind you today, it is not wrong, but God is coming back again. But just before then, there are things that we pass through. There are things that we pass in, and there are channels that we need to go through. But it is not going to be too long for us as we wait for our Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So this morning, as we figure out about never too long in this journey, but what are the things that I need to put on as a Christian as I wait for my Jesus Christ? Then one writer said this, that discouragement is dysfunction of the past, distrust of the, of the present, and distrust of the future. What am I saying? That when I am discouraged on this journey, that I have dysfunction, dissatisfaction of the past. I am not satisfied of the things that I've been going through. But at the same time, I am not able to say that the things that I'm passing through in, in the present world, they can make a meaning. But what about the future? I have lost trust. I don't trust anything about the what? The future. And the journey of a Christian who is going home, it is all about the future. So if I lose trust of the future, am I able to get home? Because our ultimate, our, ultimate, uh, our ultimate goal for any Christian is going home. But just before then, I have lost trust with Jesus Christ. I have lost trust with the future that I'm supposed to have trust that God is coming. And as I pass through issues here and there, that discouragement is not going to take any course in my life. That I'm going to see Christ and Christ alone. Therefore... Discouragement is, a, a, is not a tool that can be able to lead us home. It is just a result of blindness, ingratitude of the blessings of yesterday, then indifference of the opportunities that have been given unto us. Discouragement is insecurity of the things of today, and even it has taken our strength of tomorrow. Meaning, if I am on this journey, and I have this discouragement anymore in my life, I'm not going to make it for the future. Therefore, friends, <laughs> The journey, the journey might look tough. Things might look discouraging, but never be discouraged. Hallelujah. Because you are going to lose, in, you are going to feel insecure and lose the strength for what? For tomorrow. We need this strength for us to be able to keep on. Therefore, friends, do not allow discouragement to come into your life. Why? It, it causes you to be unaware of the presence of God. 
discouragement. It causes you to feel that God is not here. You are unaware that God is ever present. And we know that our God is always concerned of our needs as fellow human beings. And he has given us promises. But when I get discouraged when I am on the road, it gives me unbelief of the, gra of, of, what? of the promises of the word of God. Remember, the word says, do this. But when I am discouraged, this word will lose meaning as I am living in this world. Why? Because I know the devil wants to put in me unbelief. And unbelief is the greatest, it is the greatest, uh, greatest tool that can be able to drive me away from Jesus Christ. Therefore, friends, do not be discouraged. It is not going to be long. Soon we are going to be there. So do not be discouraged because this is one of the greatest tools of an enemy that is using to capture our minds to tell us that our God can never be able to do impossible things in our lives. But I'm here this morning tell you that our God is God of impossibilities. He delights doing the impossible things for the people to know that you can never limit God. But God can be able to go an extra mile. Hallelujah. You can never be able to limit God. And therefore, and, 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 and when God says he delights to do the impossible, it is because he wants to open our eyes and we be ready to see that the promises of God are yes and amen. They remain true. They will never be changed. Therefore, friends, we do not have hopeless situations in life. We do not have hopeless. Some people, some, sometimes I walk around and hear people say, I am hopeless. We do not have hopeless situations in life. But people have grown hopeless. People have grown hopeless. And this morning, we are going to see and, 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 and go in deeper into the word of God and see when I am discouraged, but I have Jesus Christ. What am I supposed to do? When I feel that I am hopeless and I have Jesus Christ, what am I supposed to do? Because him, he can be able to change situations. Therefore, do not feel discouraged. Hallelujah. See and look to Jesus Christ. Know that he is the author and finisher of your faith. He can order things in your life. He can rewrite your biography. He can be able to move the, un the un 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 unmovable things. He can be able to move and run away the stones in life. And he can be able to see into our situations and speak to them powerful words of life. Hallelujah. Therefore, I'm inviting to the book of John, chapter 5, one of my best sermons that I love, that God is speaking to us one-on-one. -on -one. Chapter 5, I'm going to read from verse 1 up to verse 8. So quickly follow me there. Chapter 5, the book of John in the New Testament. John, John is one of the beloved disciples of Jesus. He's writing to us. He's saying, chapter 5, verse 1, he's saying, After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having, the, having five porches. Verse 3. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk of brine, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Verse 4. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped into the inn was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Verse 7. The important man answered, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, uh, when water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another one steppeth down before me. Verse 8. Jesus said unto him, Rise. Take up thy bed and walk. In the sheep market, 
there was a pool that was named Bethesda. My focus in the, is on the Bethesda, on the pool, and what happened until Jesus comes in. The word Bethesda means a house of grace, a house of mercy. And we see the pool in verse, in verse 2, they are, in verse 3 saying, in verse 2, Now there, there is a, in Jerusalem by the ship market a pool, which is called the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda. Having how many portions? Five of them. Now look here, my friends. Bethesda means a house of mass, a house of, of grace. There they lay people of different diseases, a house of grace, a house of mercy. But there lay people of different what? Diseases. I just want us to look into these words. A house of what? Grace. A house of mass, a house of, 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 of the, a house that can be able to give people a new beginning. But in that house, there lay people of different what? Diseases. Something struck my mind. Something struck my mind. I know we are Christians going to heaven. And when we come to the house of God, where we expect to find mercy and grace in the same house of God, we find people who are sick. Hallelujah. <laughs> we find people who have troubles. People who are walking he, he, in here. Those people have been without food. People without a shelter. People who have been going through troubles here and there. I am told in that house, in that house, there lay people who were of different what? Diseases. They lay there. They were just sleeping. And I'm told in verse 4 that as they, as they were sleeping in that place, I am told from another commentary that it, it, they even made sure there was a shed that was made. That when you come, because people used to visit, visit the place, when you come to that place, you can be able to find a place to lie down, never to be scorched by the what? By the sun. <clears throat> they knew that the angel of God will come down to the pool and once he comes down to the pool he will trouble the waters then what happens? that whosoever goes down to the pool the first one, he will be healed of the diseases hallelujah whichever, whichever disease that you are ailing from but let, me, but let me come back here I am told the pool had five porches let me remind you friends that the church of God has an entrance. Hallelujah. The house of mass must have an what? An entrance. The five porches, it is a representation of the knowledge of the word of God. Hallelujah. Representation of the what? Of the word of God. And that word of God is leading us to the truth and the promises of Jesus Christ. Hello? Am I speaking to someone here? That as people were coming to the house of grace, they should be able to find a place. By the way, when you walk to Nairobi Central SDA Church, you know that is our entrance. That is another one. That is another one. That is another one. Okay? So when you come in, you do not vamble out around looking for a place to get in. You know that when I get, I know where I'm going to get into there. The word of God, it is the only way. It is the only porch. The only tunnel that can be able to show us Jesus Christ. When we talk about the mass of God, masses, they don't just flow. No, it comes with a tunnel. Therefore, the mercy that was supposed to reach these people, they had to get through the right channel. Hallelujah. And let me remind you the channel that they were supposed to get. Read with me the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. I'm there. Somebody there also to say amen. Chapter 3, verse 16. It says, all scripture, hallelujah, is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and instruction for righteousness. Hallelujah. The only way you can get to the house of mass of God, the only way you can be able to get to the righteousness of God, it is through the Bible and the Bible what? Alone. So, you do away with this word of God. You will never get a place to the pool because the pool has a what? A porch. And the porch is the tunnel. Which is the, what is that tunnel? The word of God. And what about the word of God? It shows us the knowledge and the promises of God. Hallelujah. 
Verse 17 says, let me, let, let me finish re reading it. Verse 17. Those of, uh, verse 17 says, therefore, <coughs> sorry, that the man of God may be perfect through thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Hallelujah. As people were coming to the pool of Bethesda, they wanted to be cleansed. They wanted to be healed. And to be healed what? Completely. No one here visit the doctor, my elder. You can't visit the doctor and he says now, elder, go home. You are somehow, but you can manage. No, when you walk to an hospital, you just want to walk out when you are what? When you are thoroughly and completely what? Okay. So as people were coming to the professors at the house of mercy, they wanted to be furnished, to be cleansed, and to be forgiven as they have been given the word of God. Hallelujah. My friends, let me remind you this morning, if you want to experience the mercy and the grace of God, the only sure way is the word of who? The word of God. It is saying, it, it, is, it is for what? For doctrine, for reproof, for rebuke, and it trains a righteous man. For what? For what? For the righteousness of God. Therefore, as people were coming, they were waiting. That pool, and that's why the psalmist is saying, ha ha, for the word of God is the lamb unto what? Unto my feet. It is there to show me the way to do what? To walk in. That is Psalm 119 verse 105. That word, because in that one, we can be able to connect with who? With Jesus Christ. I usually wonder, <laughs> some people say, pastor, they say that, uh, we are reading the spirit of prophecy and we are superior. Let me remind you today that the spirit of prophecy is a lesser light reading us to the greater light that Jesus has given us through the Bible. Hallelujah. This one is the inspiration of the word of God himself. So when we see the word, we know that God is authoritatively talking to us. What happened? <laughs> when they went in through the five porches, I'm told, any man who went down to the pool after the, the troubling of the water by the what? By the, by the, by the, sorry, by the angel, this man would be made, 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 made whole. Let me remind you this. That effect of, 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 of troubling the water, people were saying it is the troubling of the water. But I'm here to tell you this. When Almighty when our almighty God is coming to our situations and because men of our situations are because of our sins, it looks like a trouble. Hello? Why? Because our, our, our attendance, it is not connected to who? To Jesus Christ. So when the, the, the righteous God is coming to us, he disturbs all the unrighteous things. He cleanses them away. And that one, those people they used to say, it is what? Troubling of the what? Of the waters. But it was a, div a divine disturbance, divine operation that was meant to make unclean men clean for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Stepping into the water. Stepping into the water, it is following the instruction in the knowledge of what God has given us through the word of God. I already said that. That the word of God is there to give us what? Instruction. So when I am, I am, when I am, I am told, but the, when you go to hospital, you are told, eh, these drugs, you can be able to take them two times three. Instruction, you follow them, the instruction, two times three for five days. So when I am following the instruction means that the word of God, it is true. And I have to follow the word, the promises. So these people, as, as they were crumbling here and there, they were just going to the word. They, were, they had been told that the only way you step into the water and you are given what? A new life. Therefore, this man. This man, verse, verse 5, is saying, And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 30 and 8, what? Years. How many years are those? <laughs> How many years are those? 40 minus 2, 38 years. Somebody has been sick, literally has been there waiting for the troubling of the what? Of the waters. And when, I am, I'm, I'm reading verse 6, and when Jesus saw him lie, when Jesus came to the pool of Bethesda, 
He found many people who were sick. Many people who were sick. But I'm told he went directly to this man. Hello? And when he saw Jesus, mm -mm, when, this, when, when Jesus saw this man, he knew this man had been here for a long time. He knew that this man has been here for a what? For a long time. How? How? For a long time. And I, am, I, 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 I was thinking in my mind, how would Jesus come direct to the pool and say that this man has been here for a long time? I am here to remind you these friends. There is nothing in your life that escapes the eyes of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is able to see every little detail in your life. And when he comes in, he knows for how long you have been in that situation. Mm. For how long? And when he comes in, he knows even the second and the minute. And he knows that now this one, you have been troubled enough and you have to, get to, be, to, be, to be assisted to get out. Therefore, when Jesus came in, he is asking this man, I know you have been here for a long time. Then when he saw this man, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Will you be willing to be what? To be made whole? I know you have stayed here for a long time. It is 38 years. But are you ready to be what? To be given a new life. This is my question this morning. Many times, we have been we, are, we have been complaining to Jesus Christ. I am economically crippled. <laughs> Lord, even you know my family is just coming down. You know I have heart attacks here and there. But sometimes you have been in, in a problem just in a few days, in a few seconds, and you are complaining. And when Jesus comes, he just comes directly to this man, to this person who has been there for a long time. And he says, I know you've been here for a what? For a long time. Friends, nothing escapes the eyes and the ears of Jesus Christ. He's able to read into our work, into our issues. And when the man is asked, oh, my friends, this is another one. When the man was asked, will thou be made whole? Are you willing that you be given a new life? Are you... You, you know, when Jesus was asking this question, he did not even tell this man, you know, I am Jesus Christ. Now, do you want to be made whole? No. He asked this man, are you, are you willing to be made whole? To be made whole. And the, and the silly answers that this man gives here. <coughs> Sir, I have no man. Did Jesus, Jesus ask him of a man? No. He was not asking of anything. The only question here is, do you want to be Whole. Then he's saying, you see, Jesus, I do not have a man who to do what? To put me into the troubled world, troubled water. But while I am coming, someone passes over me and he steps to the world. Jesus did not need all this explanation. The only question was, do you want to be whole? Hello? Can I speak to the young people? Jesus comes to your, to your, to your life and asks you, so and so, do you want a partner in life? Oh, you see, Jesus, the other one I was talking to, oh, I don't know what happened. She said, I'm not beautiful. Ah, ah, do not explain yourself before Jesus Christ. The question is, do you want a partner in life? Yes, all. Hello? Jesus comes to your life and asks you, Elder, do you want your children to be given this and that? He has not asked you whether you have taken them for a diploma or a degree or a master's program. What Jesus says, are you what? Willing. Are we there, friends? Sometimes we give God excuses. He has not even asked us a way out. You see, sometimes, sometimes back, I was talking to another lady somewhere. She came to me, Pastor. I have been praying for my daughter for six good years to get a job. I'm like, six years? Okay. And, and what about it? But now, you see, I don't know what to do. Then in that meeting where I was, we prayed for this girl. Then God answered our prayer. The girl got a job somewhere. Then later when I went back, she's telling me, you know what, Pastor? My girl well, he was considering for a good job. Then what happened? Then she's saying, I have only one thing. That she was asked to go to job on Sabbath. What was our issue when we were praying? God give this girl a job, not on Sabbath. Then she's saying, Pastor, no, 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 no. Remember, my girl has been asking for a job for how many years? Six years. So no excuse. She's going for that job until sometimes when she's, uh, she has gotten enough money. When do we get enough money, by the way? 
When do we get enough money? We want to give God excuses. You see, God comes to my life. Edna, your house is on fire. Do you want your house to be, to be okay? Then I say, you see, Elder tried. Pastor Nyaga came. They prayed. I don't know what happened. They talked to my No, no, no. No explanation. What Jesus wanted. Jesus wanted that this man can be willfully be able to be given a new life in Jesus Christ. Let me... Let me go back to the science world. The man was giving excuses. But before we get to verse 8, Sir Isaac Newton, first law of motion. I'm not, I'm not teaching physics, but anyway, hear this. He says, everything continues in a state, of, a state of rest unless it is compelled to change by forces impressed on it. Everything it is on motionless. It is on rest until a force has been what? Applied on what? On that, on, that, on, on that object. Meaning that in our Christian walk, everything is stagnant. Everything is not moving until the word of God comes to effect our ways. Hello? See verse 8 is saying, Jesus said, after hearing those excuses, Jesus said unto him, rise, uh -huh, take up your word, your bed, and do what? And walk. And immediately, I'm told in verse 9, and immediately the man was made whole. Hallelujah. Sir Isaac Newton is saying that everything is in, in arrested. Everything is motionless unless given what? A push by the word. By the, uh, 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 a force by the word. Uh, a change is given to it by a, a force. Meaning, this force I am talking here, I'm, I'm, I'm borrowing words from Isaac Newton. This force that must be affected on the object who is me, it is the word of God. Hallelujah. When the word of God goes forth, a change must begin automatically. Hallelujah. It might take 40 years. It might take 100 years. But when the word of God comes forth, aha, there must be a change. Hello? Don't mind for how long you have been without children. Don't mind for how long you have been without a job. Do not mind for how long you have, no, you, you have not been able to get a husband. No. When the word of God says it is time, it will be a change. Read with me the book of Hebrews. The, see what the word of God says. The word of God says chapter 4 verse 12. Hebrews 4, 4, 4 verse 12 it says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any, any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and to the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Hallelujah. That word, powerful, when it gets to me, it discerns, it cuts even to the what? To the bone marrow. The word of God can make a change if you like it in your life. That word. <laughs> the word of God, what, what does it do? Remember in the book of Genesis, this one you go and read by yourself. Genesis 1, verse 1, 2, 3. It says in the beginning... There was heaven and what? And earth. And the earth was formless, was void. And the Spirit of God was, was just hovering on the what? All, all over. But in verse 3, when you read, it says, And God said, Let there be what? Be light. And what happened? Aha. Uh -huh. The word of God is powerful. And when it gets into us, it takes us out of the prison of hopelessness. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter for how long you've been in that trouble. But the word of God is a window to anyone who is willing to open for it. And when it gets to your heart, ho oh, oh, ho, my friends, it, it, it takes you away from the prison of what? Hopelessness. It gives you a new look to Jesus Christ. See this man. Jesus said to this man, rise and take up your what? Your bed and do what? And walk. And immediately, is, this man was able to do that. And he just walked away. Hallelujah. What happens? What happens? When the word of God 
It is in our life. It increases our faith. Hallelujah. It increases our faith. And faith is just believing of so, or a belief on, of something that are, that are un, unseen. Therefore, when my faith is increased, it also gives me strength to withhold on to the promises of Jesus Christ. Therefore, my favorite writer writes this in the book, Our High Calling, page 119. Sister White says, Faith is not a happy flight, a happy feeling, or a happy, a happy feeling. It is simply taking God at His word. Hallelujah! Believing that His, he, that believing that He will fulfill His promises because He said He would do that. Hallelujah! Meaning, you are not going to help God to fulfill His promises. So long as He promised, He'll do it. Hallelujah! So. Even if I have been sick for 40 years and I know God has said, call unto me and I will answer and I'll give you a new life. It will never be too long for me. Jesus himself will do what? Will come down and answer that because he has said it. In, the, in, in an, another book called The Star of Ages, page 166, paragraph 3, she says, the man's faith, the man, this man's faith took hold of the word and every nerve and muscle thrills in a new life. Hallelujah. And there was a helpful action that came into the crippled limbs of this man. Hear this. Without question, he set his will on the will of God. Hallelujah. Without question, he set his will to obey the command of Christ and his muscles responded to the will of God. Hallelujah. I love that. That when I just obey the command of God, if God comes to my life and says, this one is not good. This one is supposed to be done. And I move without questioning. He says that even my muscles will be able to be thrilled. And the moment I respond to the will of God, everything becomes new. I love that. And I love the way God does his things. This man believed God's word. And, and, and in, in action, he was able to move and he received strength. How many years, by the way? How many years this man was, was important? 38 years. 38 years. And when God came to him and asked, without be made me, will, will thou be made whole? And the moment he was told, rise up and take your what? Your mat and go. The moment he, 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 he was able to obey that command, that time, his muscles responded. I, I love the way Sister White continues to write. She says that the, the angle bones were able to connect and there was life. And they felt that now I can be able to stand. Someone who was not, be able, to, was not able to stand for a long time, he was able to stand. And in the same faith, you can receive your spiritual blessings, your physical healing by taking the word of God the way it is. Hallelujah. The same way, you can be given blessings. You do not need to complain that God, you have, you have, you have shut your doors from answering me. No, God can answer our prayers anytime, anywhere, and is able to do what? To come down to our issues. Let me remind you, my friends. Let those, those who are despondent, those who are struggling, look up in faith. Hallelujah. Those who are struggling in whichever situation that you are in, it will never take long for Jesus Christ. Why? He says, the Savior is bending down. Hallelujah. I love that statement. That as I, in my despondent moment, in my struggling moment, as I look to Jesus in faith, he's just looking down. He has bent, not even looking down. He is bending over for the purchase of his blood is on his own course. Hallelujah. And the moment he has bent to look at me, the only thing Jesus can be able to say in tenderness, in tenderness and in, in, in pity, he says, will thou be made whole? Are you willing to be given a what? A new life. Are you able? He bids us rise. And take up your mouth. And in the same spirit, it will you when when you look you look back. I said it is this state of the of the what of the past. When you look at the past, 
you say, hmm, it is just the other day. Just the other day. Just the other day. Why? Because God is concerned. Do not despair, for God is the answer. Hallelujah. Do not be hopeless because we have hope in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is hope in where? In Jesus Christ. He has promised and is saying that for those who hope in the Lord, hallelujah, your strength will be renewed. Hallelujah. You'll be able to see that I have wasted my 40 years. I have wasted my 20 years looking for a job. I have wasted my 20 years in, in a marriage that is not working. But let me remind you this. God is able to renew your strength. Hallelujah. And you will so higher as an ego. He will give you strength that you'll be able to run and never grow weary. Hmm. That God. No one is hopeless before the eyes of God. Hallelujah. Why? We have a powerful God who has promised those beautiful promises in this word. Hallelujah. Cling to this word and all your infirmities will be given a way out. Therefore, Sister White says in the book of Prophets and Kings, page 206, she says, when in faith, hallelujah, when in faith we take hold of his strength, he will change. When in faith we take hold of his strength, he will change. What will he do about the change? And wonderfully change the most hopeless and discouraging outlook in our life. Hallelujah. When this man was sleeping there at the pool of Bethesda, he was hopeless. He did not have a way to be able to believe on. He, not know, he did not know what to do. And that's why when Jesus is coming, will you be made whole? It's like, you see Jesus, you see, you see. No, 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 no. When you look unto Jesus, take hold of his strength, he will wonderfully change and give you the most hopeful situation in your life. Therefore, friends, this life can be able to throw you many infirmities. There are so many people who are suffering in this church. And we are looking to Jesus as an answer of our, of, of, of our issues. But the only thing I can be able to tell you, do not be discouraged. Do not tell Jesus excuses. Do not give him anything. But do this. Just take hold of him and take hold of his strength. And he will wonderfully change your what? Your situations. Therefore... Though life on earth may bring us suffering and pain and disappointments, we look forward with hope to a time when all will be made new and right before the eyes of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Do we have somebody in the congregation who is saying, I have been struggling in my infirmities. I do not know which infirmity you are struggling with. But you are saying, Jesus I will want you to make me whole. And I don't want to give an excuse. I don't want to tell you on how to do it. I don't want to ask of anything. But one thing I am asking, that God, may you heal me of all the infirmities. Take them away because I think it has been long. But I know, you know, it has been long. And now you're going to change everything. Is there someone in the ministry saying that God changed my infirmities and make sure that you are going to give me a new life in Jesus Christ? Let me see. Let me see. I know people are struggling in this church. We have different infirmities, but God is speaking unto us and is telling us he will wonderfully do what? Change. And before these kids come to sing, I'm going to pray the way we are. I'm going to pray. But ask yourself, am I given Christ time? Am I, am I able to obey what he has commanded? And if that is, that is what you are, you are saying, just raise up your hand. Just raise up your hand. Eternal God, these hands are just saying, but God, I have been in this situation for a long time. But one thing I know, you know and you understand. Now come to our issue and change them and do it according to your will. And make us to be subjects that are going to be able to glorify your name. Because God, you have given us power and grace to be able to hold on to this word that you've given unto us. Let this word speak to us, change us, and give us new life in Jesus Christ. For we pray and trust in Jesus' name. May God bless you.